Hello everyone, my name is Tash. Welcome to Railsway Academy. Today we are going to learn how to use the count function group in Google Sheets. It includes count, count a, count if, count if as, count blank, and count unique functions. You will get to know all the ways how to use counts. The dataset I will use today is the sales list. You can get this Google Sheet via the link in the video description to follow along with the tutorial. If you want to do so, click pause and get your copy now. All account functions help you calculate how many values there are in the selected range. As simple as this. You can also count based on the specific criteria, a single condition or multiple ones. Let's start with the basic count function, which helps calculate the number of cells that contain a numeric value. The structure of the formula is next. Start by typing equal sign, then enter the function name count and type arguments in parentheses. The arguments can be cell references or values. Count function returns the number of numeric values in a dataset. I want to know how many orders we have. If we work with a large dataset, it would be hard and not efficient to count this manually. That's where the count function can help. To get the result, select a cell where you want to place your result. Type equals sign, then count, open parentheses. Here you can see the function help box where you can find the description and syntax of the formula you are using now. We have already discussed it, so let's move forward. You can hide the description by clicking the cross. First, click and drag the range that needs to be counted. Or type the first and the last cell indices. Our range would be F2 through F12. Close the parentheses and press Enter. We have 11 customers. By the way, you don't need to enter the formula to get a result of the count function. G-Sheet can do it automatically. Select the same range F2 to F12 and click on a quick sum window in the right lower corner. Here you can see the results of the most commonly used functions, including one of the most popular ones, sum function. To learn more about this formula, watch the sum tutorial by Railsware Academy. You can click on a link in the right upper corner or find it in the description below. We see the result of the count function in this window. This is a great way to go if you need to have a quick look and don't plan to use the count in your further calculations. By the way, if you want to import a different dataset from a G-Sheet, HubSpot, Pipedrive or Clockify, you can use couplet.io. This is a great tool to pull your data from various apps to Google Sheets on a set schedule with no coding required. Find the link in the video description. Let's try to count the number of cells in column B. We can copy our formula to the cell below. Select a cell with our formula. Right-click on it, copy, select a cell below, right-click on this cell and choose Paste. Now we change the formula in the function field above. Click on the current range, press F2. This shortcut will turn on the range selection mode to make adjustments to the range. Select the new range A2 to A12, hit Enter. You can see that we get a zero because the count function allows us to count only numeric values. To get the result we need, use the count A function, which can count cells that contain any value. So let's select the cell I4 again and type A after count. Now we get the same result as with previous formula. Be careful with blank cells because these count functions ignore them. For example, if we change our range to A2 through A14 in our previous formula, Google doesn't count these extra blank cells. Let's move on and learn one of the most commonly used functions, count if. This function allows us to count the cells that meet a certain criterion. Count if function consists of two parameters. What do you want to count and based on which criterion? So first you enter range of cells and then a single criterion. Imagine we want to get statistics of how many customers are from New York. Here the count if function can help us. Choose a cell where you want to see the result, type the equal sign, enter the count if command and open the parentheses. 
First click and drag the range to count or just type the first and the last cell indices joined by a colon. Our range would be B2 through B12. Then enter a comma and write the criterion. New York. Notice that the text values used as criteria should be in quotations. To sum up, we counted how many occurrences of New York can be found in the B2 to B12 range. Here you can see the result. We have three customers from New York. Instead of using the fixed value, you can use the reference to the cell. Let's try to change our criterion. Instead of the word New York, we can use the reference to the cell H7, which contains the word. So now I delete our criterion and click on a cell H7. You can see that we get the same result, but now we can change the value in the cell to Maryland, for example, and get the new result automatically without editing the formula. Now I want to figure out how many customers spent more than $1,000. Type the count if comment as we did at the previous step. Choose the range F2 to F12. Then comes the criterion, greater than 1000. When a logical operator is included with a number, the number and operator must be enclosed in quotes. Hit enter and we see that 5 customers spent more than $1000. Now I want to give you a useful note. You don't need to type formulas from the beginning every time. If you want to test the same range to meet different criteria, you can fix the range. Let's find out how many orders each customer makes. I have prepared a list of customers for reference in advance here. Type the count if formula in the cell L1. Choose the range A2 to A12. To fix the range, Enter dollar signs before and after the literal index, here and here, or press F4 to do it automatically. Choose the reference to cell K4 as the criterion, then click on the cell which contains the formula and drag it down. If you open the formula from this cell where we copied it, you can see that the initial range stays the same. However, the reference cell for criterion changed. This is thanks to Google Sheets logic. If you copy the formula down the column, you will get the row indices changing. If you would drag it in the row, you would see that for each new formula, the column index changes. Let's learn more about different criteria and their formats needed in Google Sheets. A criterion can be a number, a text string, a cell reference, or an expression. It also can include operators to compare values and wildcards to help count cells with partial match. If you want to find more about wildcards and how to work with text in Google Sheets, click the bell to stay tuned for our future video. Let's review the table and discuss the syntax. When we use a number as a criterion in countif function, tap it after a range without quotation marks or equal sign. To test the data that contain text, we use a text string as a criterion. Text string must be enclosed in double quotation marks. To use a cell reference with data, place the needed cell index after the range without quotes. Operators such as greater than, less than, equal to are used to check the criterion with a number. The expression must be enclosed in double quotation marks. Text strings that contain wildcards, question mark and asterisk must be added to the countif function in double quote. You can take a screenshot of this table or download the Railsway Academy practice sheet with this hint. Find it in the video description. Let's talk more about the wildcards. They are very useful if you want to find cells that contain specific text. For example, you need to count how many sales Roger Fisher had. But as you see, his name is written in different ways. That's why we can't enter Fisher by itself as a criterion. We need to use asterisk marks here. Enter the function in a cell i9. Select this range with manager's names. As the criterion, write Fisher in asterisk marks and don't forget to wrap it in quotes. You can see that the function counts how many times the word Fisher meets up in the range in any way. 
If you want to count cells that start or end with certain letters and contain the exact number of characters, you can use the COUNTIF function with the question mark in the criteria. For instance, let's find out how many cells in column B start with the letter M and consist of 5 characters. Type COUNTIF, choose the range B2 to B12, comma, open quotes, then write letter M and question marks that represent the number of letters in the word without first one. It would be 4 in our case. There we go. So we have one cell with the word main that meets this criterion. With COUNTIF you can state a single criterion only. If you want to specify two or more criterion, you should use the COUNTIF AS function. Its structure is similar to the COUNTIF function. The range goes first, comma, the criterion you are looking for goes next. But here we can enter multiple ranges and criteria to look for. Keep in mind that the COUNTIF AS expects all arguments to be in pairs. Range 1 plus criterion 1, range 2 plus criterion 2, and so on. Also, COUNTFS uses the AND logic. This means that the formula will count only the values that match all of the criteria, not just one of them. If you want to state multiple criteria for a single range, just use the same range a few times in pairs with a different criteria. For instance, we need to know how many customers from New York spent more than $2,000. Choose a cell where you want to get the result. Enter count if as, open parentheses. First select the range B2 to B12 and write the criterion New York in quotes. Then we move to the second range, sales total amount. The criterion we are checking on would be greater than 2000 in quotes. Never forget about the quote for the count formulas to work unless your condition is an exact numeric match. Close parenthesis. Hit enter. So we have two customers that spent more than $2,000. Remember that the ranges should consist of an equal number of sales. Also, we can find out how many sales over $600 each manager makes. We will fill this table. First, select a cell opposite the manager Roger Fisher. Type equal sign, count if as, open parentheses, choose the first range which contains manager's names, C2 to C12. Press F4 to lock the range, comma, the criterion will be a reference to a cell K9 with the first name, comma. Add a second range with sales amount. Lock it. Comma. Criterion for this range would be greater than 600. Don't forget about the quote. Close parentheses and hit enter. As we locked our references to the ranges, we can autofill the rest of this table. Click on the cell with the result and drag down the lower right corner. There we go. Another useful function in the count group is count unique. It returns the number of cells containing unique values among duplicates. We can find how many unique customers we have in our database. Select a destination cell, type equal sign, count unique, open parentheses, select the range A2 to A12 as an argument, close parentheses, press enter, you see that the function counts only the first mention of each customer and ignores the following duplicates. Be careful with having blank cells as those might count as additional unique values as well. The last function we will review today is count blank. As you may guess, it counts blank cells. Let's delete some values in column D and now count blank cells in this column. Select this cell, type equal sign, then enter count blank. Open parentheses, choose this range D2 to D12, close parentheses, press enter and it gets us 4 blank cells. But not all cells are truly blank. A cell can contain a formula with empty quotes and returns a blank output. However, the count blank function doesn't recognize it. Such formulas are considered blank and will be counted. For example, type equal sign if open parenthesis if the cell D2 greater than 20 return empty quotes for a true result and zero for a false result. We get a blank cell here as a result. 
but the cell isn't truly blank. However, you can see that the result of the count blank function didn't change. So, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Now you know how to count anything you want the way you want. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the Railsway Academy channel. More tutorials are coming up soon. If you have any questions or suggestions on what would you like to learn in the next tutorial, please share it in the comments below. See you next time! Bye!